Um, so, I'll just read a few of these poems to you guys. Um, so this first one is called The Circus is in Town. <laughs> Brooklyn is sirens squealing, drills pounding concrete, and beeping trucks break screech. Even the littlest birds scream in Brooklyn, the sparrows with their tiny brown bodies and mighty lungs. No chirping beautiful songs, just pigeons cooing and pooing. Hammers pounding, subways clanking, underground, and people talking, oh my god, the things they say. No wonder he gave you a cigarette, girl with your big, at, sweaty ass fun bags hanging out. And he's a bad kisser, and he has a brain tumor. <laughs> and I get stunned by this world run by douchebags. That last one was me. I duck into the Gorilla Coffee with its music blasting, espresso machines clicking, and milk steam streak. I shivered whole winters away at these red tables writing, trying to write the wrongs wired in my head. The noise outside is nothing compared to the blasting inside my brain. In this life, the only enemy I have is my own mind. Head to the Q train, somewhere between Atlantic and Decal. A kid starts to scream, Poppy, I've never been to the circus. I want to go to the circus. A New York kid, trust me, you're already here. <laughs> So this next one's called St. Francis. Let me see which way is better for the lighting here. St. Francis of 42nd Street. Uh, this way's better. Um, that's the thing with all these readings. It's like the light. Um, troubadour turned beggar. A dapper king growling from your jeweled throne as I enter your home. You turn your whiskered nose up until I offer mites bites of cheese from the icebox. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you take them carefully from my fingertips with your tiny teeth, then to show your love of all creatures great and small, you pump your giraffe. Our pilgrimage begins. We step out amidst the poor clairs. You sniff gingerly, slip and click, pause, scrape, hallway linoleum as you scuttle from doormat to doormat. Sit your silent protest of passive resistance at the top of the stairs. It worked for Gandhi and Martin Luther King, but you're just ten tough pounds of hair and teeth, a bat without wings, this city's great rat terrier, terrorist king. Jacob's not the only one wrestling with bigger things. I coax you downward. You resist and relent, sensing my stubbornness more than your own. On the streets, you're a bowling ball of strength on a string, a yo-yo, getting caught in the sense of trees and your need to mark everything, a urinary graffiti artist bombing the hell out of Brooklyn, needing to be smelled and seen. And then comes a shepherd, a flock of other dogs, and you snap from your cool collar upturned James Dean to the 42nd Street Savage yelling and foaming. You may need to rethink your recruitment strategy. Yeah. I lift you up in your harness, suspended, you squirm, a spider, web-worn and traveling. A flight of steps, a flight of depths, stop dead in your tracks, afraid of falling upwards. It's let go or be dragged, you're rising, surprising yourself with your own abilities. If only walking through fear was as easy as being pulled up by someone who keeps believing. <laughs> that with uh, I was working with a chihuahua who wouldn't go up the stairs on his own so or come down the stairs on his own so. Um, uh, so this poem uh, I wrote just taking a walk around Brooklyn with my husband it's called East River Walk Talk we take these epic walks from Fifth Avenue and the Slope to the street fairs in Carroll Gardens selling the same socks and jewelry, African masks and homemade lemonade along Smith Street. We keep going through Cobble Hill to Brooklyn Heights, sit on the promenade, and look at Manhattan's lower toothy grin where no one goes but the tourists, businessmen, and commuters from Staten Island. We watch the ships chug slowly by under clouds of blue then keep walking to Dumbo to the ice cream shop with the long lines. Walk amongst the old brick warehouse buildings where Whitman once wrote for the Daily Eagle. Make our way to Brooklyn Bridge Park to sit in the grass and watch the same old guy in the banana yellow thong sunning, sunning himself 
<laughs> to the onlooker's giggles, then head up to the bridge, trying not to look down through the wooden slats at the river deep below, to South Street Seaport, where we sit in wooden lounge chairs, thinking about how long it took us to finally get here, stare at where we came from, and you say, all I want is to sit by the water with you. Wow. This one's called Searching for Whitman's Beard, and I actually have postcards with the um, picture of this dog and then this poem on the back for free back there, and I have um, books too if anybody's interested in buying one. Um, searching for Whitman's Beard. Brooklyn sidewalks are covered with yellow leaves and squash stinky ginkgo seeds from the vomit trees. Another day spent searching for Whitman's Beard on barren streets or a bit of his pen and ink inside me. Four o'clock on the corner of Washington and Sterling, they're clanking the metal shutters down at Tom's restaurant. No more cherry lime rickies and smiling waiters handing out sugar cookies. The sun is dropping behind the old buildings. I've already been out walking four hours, hungry, feet ache, shivering. With icicle fingers, I stroke Maggie. She keeps her eyes on the cars whooshing by until I stop petting, pocketing my hands for warming. She flips her nose up, an upside down possum peering at me, insisting my hurting hands will be warmer, scratching in her tangles of thick black fur. But I am ice, I pity sing, no one will read my words, I'm nothing for the game playing. Maggie grunts and groans impatiently back at me. She pulls to sniff bear trees, soon again come green leaves. Thanks. You could read that.